Hello, and welcome to Agros of Physics. My name is Mr. Predwicki, and I will be your instructor for this next 144 days. The course will be high school physics. It will be an introductory course covering topics such as motion, projectile motion, forces, energy, momentum, impulse, gravitation, waves, light, electricity and magnetism, and even some modern physics. I've chosen the 144 days because a typical school year is about 36 weeks. If we multiply 36 weeks times 5 days per week, we'd get 180 days. And that's the typical length of a school year, 180 days. Unfortunately, due to holidays, due to um, weather-related delays or cancellations, field trips, awards assemblies, possibly even college visits or uh, sporting events, I've found that students are typically not in the classroom for the full 180 days. We may not even meet the full 180 days. So what I tried to do is imagine a course that is covered in four days per week so that the average week will be about four days with an extra day of practice problems, demonstrations, maybe supplemental laboratory experiences, um, or real world example problems uh, dealing with physics. So I took the course, um, typical high school course, and broke it into 36 weeks and broke those 36 weeks into four days per week. The expectation is that students will watch videos and cover the lecture material at home. The class time will be spent doing problem solving, uh, working on laboratory experiences, and exploring physics hands-on. The lecture material uh, will be scaffolded, so there will be note packets where students will be able to write the notes while they're watching the videos and um, basically take that time away from the classroom. And instead of having students do practice problems at home, we're going to spend class time doing the problems together. Many students in physics especially have difficulty beginning problems to start them. Uh, the word problems have nuances within them that are difficult. The equations prove to be difficult for many students. And what I've found is that many people come into class uh, with homeworks that are half done or merely uh, copied from one another. Students who uh, have trouble starting the problems become frustrated and find it difficult to continue in the course. The way physics works is that every day builds upon the previous day. So I think of it as uh, building a wall or even a pyramid. We start with the foundation, the, the simple concepts or the more basic concepts, and we build more complex concepts on top of them, almost as you're building the wall or the pyramid. About halfway through the course, at around day 72, we'll cover um, the end of the mechanics section, which is all the study of motion. At that point, students will be able to solve problems that are extremely complex. If they do not understand the beginning material, they find it even more difficult to understand the concepts mid-year through the course. So what I've decided to do is come up with a way where students will be able to ask questions of myself and of their peers who might be having better success, and we can all understand the concepts together. I have been teaching physics for 15 years now. And over the past 15 years, I've taught regents physics in New York State, advanced placement physics, and non-regents and applied physics. I've taught every level of physics that our school offers. And I've found that students are becoming more uh, passive in their experience with physics. Unfortunately, more students are watching the lectures. They're writing the notes diligently. Um, they seem to be engaged in their learning, but something's not clicking um, between the uh, active part in, in class and the active part at home. Students who are passive in class are having difficulty activating their knowledge of the physics when they get home because it's too abstract for them still, and they haven't actually worked on the practice problems. So 
what I found is that physics needs to be an active uh, experience. It cannot be something that students just watch and observe and then understand. They need to practice. They need to try problems. They need to effectively fail a number of times before they achieve true knowledge. And in this uh, society, um, we have a very negative stigma against failure. Uh, many of the students that I teach have gone through uh, biology and earth science and chemistry and have had uh, success in those courses. They get to physics and they eff effectively hit a brick wall in terms of their understanding. They get fearful. Um, and mainly that's uh, a, a level of their ability to solve problems. And physics is all about problem solving. And without trying to solve the problems, uh, many students find that it's uh, difficult to do well in the course. I found that homework over the years has plummeted in terms of participation. Students have words written on the pages. They have uh, solutions to their problems. But if I asked each one of them to solve them, I, I bet we'd have a less than 50% uh, ability rate uh, on any given day. So what I've decided to do is take a more hands-on approach to the students' um, active time in their physics instruction. Class is going to be run as a recitation. Most of the days will involve students working on practice problems. Um, I will be there to facilitate. I will be there to help. I will be there to, um, I guess, help unstick stuck students. And we will be able to move forward, I think, quicker. Writing the notes takes time. Um, over the years, I've cut out many demonstrations. I've cut out many quizzes to assess learning. I've cut out even some tests because of time constraints. Students who are not in the class because of uh, music lessons or because of sporting events and sectional events um, do not get the same instruction as students who are in the classroom working each day and through no fault of their own. So I found that this um, this methodology may work a little better. Students who are absent can still get the notes. Students who are absent can still get the lecture material. Um, and while we're together, that can be spent uh, more productively during class. I hope to do more demonstrations. I hope to do more um, laboratory experiences in the classroom and not just in the laboratory setting. And I hope to experience more uh, physics um, conceptually and qualitatively, not just quantitatively. Not all of physics needs to be numbers, and I find that if students understand the concepts, they will understand how to get the answers uh, more readily. So I look forward to working with each student. I'm going to consider this uh, lesson day zero. This is our introduction. Um, I'll give a short biography of myself in a, in a few minutes and then we'll start learning the concepts uh, in earnest. Welcome to A Gross of Physics, and I look forward to working with each one of you. Thank you. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Once again, my name is Mr. Predwicki, and I have been teaching physics for 15 years. I'm a New York State certified teacher in physics and general science. I attended Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute from 1993 to 1997, where I received my computer and systems engineering degree. At the time I was at RPI, there was an undergraduate uh, course where you can also become certified to teach. And at the time I had been working in the summers at a summer camp um, for elementary age students uh, in special education. I effectively was a camp counselor. Um, there wasn't as much uh, instruction going on during the summer, um, but I really enjoyed working in a, in a school setting. Um, so each summer when I came home from, from school in mid-May, I would substitute at the elementary schools for the rest of the school year till the end of June, and then I would work over the summer as a teacher's aide is what I was considered. But effectively, uh, I was a camp counselor. I had a, a lot of fun taking the kids to the park, to the beach. Um, we had mostly uh, social time, not, not heavy academics. But at that age, the age bracket ranged from 8th to 12 or so. Um, we did a little bit of uh, instructional time. 
I worked with uh, veteran teachers who continued to work with the students, um, not just during the school year, but also over the summer. And I learned a lot about classroom management and um, empathy for, for students. It was a good experience. And uh, I thought that I could take that uh, time and apply it to a, an older group of students teaching a subject that I was more familiar with and more confident in. The way my engineering degree worked is I took courses in basically every topic that we cover in physics as an entire course. I took uh, multiple courses in electronics. I took a number of courses in statics and uh, energy and optics and uh, fields and waves, for example. And each one of these topics is something that we cover now in high school physics. The level of difficulty of the courses I took at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute were extremely uh, high level, but I had gone through the New York State Regents program in high school, and it built upon my knowledge base that I gained there. So after college in 1997, I was uh, certified to teach and I had a degree in computer and systems engineering. Well, after student teaching at Shaker High School in um, Colony, I finished the uh, internship in the middle of the school year. Fortunately for me, there was an opening at Schenectady High School for a sabbatical to finish out the year. And I was able to teach in the fall semester at North Colony and then the uh, spring semester over at Schenectady High School. And I was able to complete an entire year of physics instruction in both advanced placement physics and in regions physics over my student teaching and then my sabbatical experience. After my sabbatical was completed, um, or after I completed filling in for the sabbatical, there was a job opening across the river from Schenectady uh, in Scotia Glenville. I was hired there and have been working since 1998 ever since. Um, for the last 15 years I've taught Regents Physics every year. I've taught Advanced Placement Physics the B-level course for the past uh, decade and a few years throughout depending upon enrollment I've taught non-Regents Physics and Applied Physics and we tried to do different versions of the courses. Some were group based some were project-based, some were traditional lecture style, uh, just without a lab component. And what I've found is that over the years, uh, the physics content has remained the same. We haven't changed the laws of physics uh, completely yet, but um, the delivery methods and the content, uh, delivery and classroom management, for example, have changed radically. Um, I started with a strict lecture format and then morphed to a group uh, cooperative learning style and we've gone back and forth. I started in my classroom in 1998 with blackboards and now we have whiteboards and smart boards and projector systems and uh, internet capabilities in the classroom, etc. So over the 15 years, uh, one of my um, strong points is my, my technological background from RPI. I'm able to take new technologies and incorporate them into my lessons uh, when I feel it's appropriate. My master's degree is from Nova Southeastern University and it's in computer, uh, computing technology and education. And I finished that in 2000. Well, in 2000, we were still using um, technology that today would uh, seem archaic. Um, I logged into a bulletin board to take my classes. We had a, a classroom environment where I um, a, basically took a seat in a virtual lecture hall and participated with a whiteboard over the internet. Um, at the time that was cutting edge. Now this, uh, that kind of technology is commonplace. So what I've found is that it's, it's important to um, incorporate technology into the classroom, but we, we need to be able to justify its use. Um, I think that we have, or at least I have in my classroom, found that from day one I am sprinting to the end to finish the Regents curriculum. I finish the course every year on the last day of school. 
And many of my students by that point are so exhausted and so tired and the seniors are, are looking forward to graduation and looking even past graduation to college that um, there's little time for review. So what I'm hoping to do is uh, find a way to speed up the classroom um, by slowing it down. So I know that sounds counterintuitive, but if I can take tasks that can be done elsewhere, um, such as note taking, such as listening to the lectures, and remove that from the classroom, we can spend more time in the classroom actively learning physics. Um, I hope that this is a uh, positive experience for my students. Um, I hope that this can help students who may be in other courses, uh, not in my direct classroom as well. I know that um, many students find their physics teacher to be their sole source of information. Many students are not reading the textbooks, they're not reading supplementary, supplementary uh, reading uh, passages, and they're getting a single uh, point of view in all of the physics knowledge that they gain. Hopefully this can be used as a secondary source for many students who are not in my classroom um, throughout the, the region, throughout the state, and possibly throughout the country or the world. I uh, hope to make this accessible to all students. This is not just a course for high school seniors or juniors. Um, this could be for someone who uh, just wants to understand a particular topic in physics. It could be for homeschooled students who um, don't understand the material from the textbook they're reading or from the uh, review book they're using. And this could be a way for them to understand physics uh, in a more uh, deep and uh, meaningful way. So I've effectively gone from a strict technological background at RPI. I'm a computer and systems engineer. I did my master's degree in computing technology and um, for the first half of my career I was using the blackboard and chalk and it was effective. Um, since that time I've been trying to incorporate technology into the classroom in a uh, meaningful way, in a, uh, in a way that proves useful. Um, I don't really find it useful to throw technology at students. I think it needs to be done uh, carefully and it needs to be justified. So that's a little bit about myself um, and we'll move on to other topics uh, from here.